Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. This is Kathy and I'm excited to be back because I was down for a week with a really bad kink in my neck. Um, but now that that's all done and over with, I am back and I am excited to share a card today featuring the Nerdy Easter Bunny stamp set as well as the Hoppiness stamp set from Greta Steiner Designs. And I wanted to share a few tips with you today about how to do masking when you have a top, middle, and bottom image, but you need the top and the bottom image to be in front of the middle image. So to start out, I placed a piece of 80 pound Nina Solar White cardstock into my stamp platform. And I stamped the row of Easter eggs on the bottom using my favorite things, Extreme Black Hybrid Ink. And I did create a mask for that because I do want the eggs to be in front of the fence. So whatever image you want to be in the foreground, that's the image you stamp first. Next, I created a mask using just a sticky note of the fence. And that was just so I would know where to place the bunny because I wanted the bunny to be in front of the fence as well. So once I had that placed, I removed the mask for the fence and just stamped my bunny using the same ink. So it appears that he's just kind of floating in the air there. Um, the next thing I had to do was mask off the bunny so that his paws would appear to be in front of the fence. So I cut out a mask using Eclipse masking tape, which is the same thing that I used for the row of Easter eggs on the bottom, by the way. And I had him masked up and then I put the mask for the fence back down just to use as a placement holder so I would know where to put the stamp. Once I had the stamp in place and lifted up with my platform door, I removed the fence mask and then stamped it. And then it was time to remove all the masks. And as you can see, the bunny is in front of the fence and the row of Easter eggs is in front of the fence. So those were just a few tips that I wanted to share. Um, you know, just create a temporary mask just to help with placement. And remember that whatever you want to be in front is what you stamp first. After I had all of the stamping done, it was time to start up the coloring. And for the coloring, I will make sure to list all of the markers that I use down below, as well as over on my blog. And I am going to play some music for you while I finish up the coloring. Okay, no, I'm not going to play music. And I decided not to play music quite yet because I noticed that there were a few things that I did while I was coloring, um, particularly the fence and the grass. And I thought that it might be nice to kind of point out a couple of things that work well for me, especially because I'm left-handed. Um, so before I get to the fence, I'm just going to, you know, talk about the bunny a little bit. I did very little coloring on the bunny. I used warm grays. Um, and again, I'll list the exact colors that I used in the description below as well as on my blog. Um, I did very little coloring on the bunny. I kind of wanted him to be a light gray, but I didn't want him, I didn't want the gray to completely overtake. Now with the fence, um, I did something that I normally don't do because I usually start with my darkest color, but in this instance, I did start with my lightest color because I had to kind of work around the flowers and the eggs that were up against the fence. And another thing that I do, um, it's easier for me to pull the marker towards myself rather than try and flick away from myself, especially when I'm working, especially when I'm coloring an image that has stuff around it or in front of it, like the eggs and the bunny. So that's why I went in with my lightest color first. Um, also to help saturate the paper enough so that the darker colors would kind of automatically start blending on their own. And I encourage you, whether you're left-handed or right-handed, turn the paper as you need to and try coloring either pulling towards you or flicking away from you and see what is most comfortable for you. Um, a lot of times like working around those little daffodils, I'm not really even flicking. I'm just kind of touching the tip of the marker to the cardstock. Now for the wood grain in the fence, 
I did want to draw a little bit more attention to that. So I just basically traced over the lines with my darkest color. And once I'm done with the darkest brown, I actually come in with my midtone and just blend it all together. So for the fence in this case, I did something that I don't normally do. I started with my lightest color, then I moved out to my darkest color, and then I came back in with the midtone just to blend it all out. While I was coloring the fence, you'll notice that I'll kind of work from the top down to about the middle of the fence, and then I turn the paper and start pulling towards me from the bottom up. That kind of helps me keep within the lines so that I have less cleanup to do later on with a colorless blender. And then moving on to the grass, I started with my darkest shade of green and I only used two shades. I started with the darkest shade um, to do the blades of grass that were right in front of the eggs and then there's a few little sprigs right behind the eggs and, and near the flowers. And again, I just, I have to turn the paper to make sure that I'm keeping the color where I want it to be. And I wanted to extend the grass line a little bit lower. So there I just did tiny little flicking motions. I wasn't worried about blending. I was okay if there was white space in between. Then I come back in with the darker color just to add a few more blades of grass just so that there's a little bit more texture by having the two different colors. After I add in the blades with the darker green, I go back in with the lighter green and add a few more blades of grass and then I just use, nope, oh, nope, more dark blades. Um, and then what I do is I just kind of blend all of that together with the lightest marker or the lightest green that I used. And whew, I'm out of practice being down for a week, so forgive me for that. Anyway, I didn't want to just leave it with music that whole time because I did want to share the tips of either coloring towards you or coloring away from you. Um, I, there's no right or wrong way, whatever works best for you. For me being left-handed, I feel like I have a little bit more control if I pull towards me, especially like I had mentioned, working on an image like the fence where I'm trying to keep the color within the fence and not get into the bunny paws and into the flowers and the eggs, which I did anyway, because you may have noticed I brought in my colorless blender for a little while there. Okay, so now is the time that I'm going to leave you with some music while I finish up the coloring and I'll be back when I'm done. After I finished all the coloring, I decided to add some clouds in the background. So I put the masks back in place to protect all of the coloring that I had just done and just used tumbled glass distress ink with a piece of a yellow sponge. Um, I get them at Michael's in a three pack for, I think they're $3. So basically a dollar sponge. And then I cut them into wedges because that makes it easier to handle. And then you get eight wedges from one sponge. so you can use them with eight different colors. After I was done adding the cloudy sky, I ran it through my die cut machine with a stitched rectangle die and then just kind of filled in a little bit on the bottom left there where I didn't extend the grass far enough out. 
um, quick and easy fix. And then it was just time to finish putting the card together. So I adhered the stamped and colored panel onto a pink stitched scalloped rectangle that I had previously cut and then just adhered all the bits and pieces together. And that finishes up my card for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. And don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.